Welcome to Children of the Rainbow, the Religion, Legends, and Gods of Pre-Christian Hawaii by Leinani Melville. Chapter 1, Introduction. Did the natives of pre-Christian Hawaii have a spiritual concept of divinity in heaven, or did they worship hideous wooden idols, as several Western writers of Hawaiiana claim they did? Why am I pronouncing Hawaii as Hawaii? Uh, he spells Hawaii as H-A-V, as in Victor, A-I apostrophe I. Um, and I believe that's because he's talking about pre-Christian Hawaii. Maybe as we read and go along, Hawaii will be known as I'm used to it being known. Um because Hawaii became a state, I believe, in 1950. That's our newest state. If not Hawaii, then Alaska. But one of the two, both are, um, actually both are our newer states to join the union. Um, also, I'm not sure why he's using the word hideous. When I went to Hawaii, I saw tiki statues that were carved with wood and I could appreciate the artistry of the wood carvers they were just beautiful and I'm sure it took a lot of time to carve into the wood so I believe that's a judgment call you know he's using the word hideous um I don't know we'll have to see hopefully as we read we will find out what Leinani's background is Leilani reminds me of Leilani and I know that that is a Hawaiian female and then as I've read other books Leilani is a man so but I'm not exactly sure what his background is but hopefully we will find out as we go along going back to the book we cannot depend entirely upon the recordings of missionaries and early historians for an answer to this question. So did the early Hawaiians worship uh, idols or did they worship divinity in heaven? So that's the question. Hopefully we will find out the answer to fairly soon. The Western way of thinking is very different from that of the spiritually minded natives of Hawaii, Hawaii, who, though they lived in a primitive civilization, lived not as ignorant savages, but as intelligent citizens in their own barbaric way. Now, I was going to say, oh, I'm so glad that he's not referring, the author's not referring to the natives as savages, but then he says barbaric in the same sentence, which I don't like. From the beginning of their activity in the islands, the missionaries clashed with the Tahunas, priests, adepts, skilled practitioners, who were enlightened teachers of the former Hawaiian priesthood. And I'm used to Kahunas, but this word is with a T, Tahunas. And in parentheses, it says Tahunas are priests, adepts, skilled practitioners. They thereby cut themselves off from the supply line of ancient wisdom. They erected an invisible fence between themselves and the native priests because of differences over religious opinions. So they being the missionaries, the latter kept the foreigners in their own pasture. And unto this day, none of the, quote, we are holier than thou, unquote, have been able to scale that fence scramble over its ridge and enter the forbidden territory of the Tahunas. Now this was written in 1969 and so um, a lot has happened since then. I believe that uh, Hawaiians, Native Hawaiians are looking at as um, at foreigners with more love in their heart. There used to be a disdain um, to foreigners, but now they're more accepting of foreigners. 
Although when I did go a few years ago and stayed there, there was a dislike of Californians. And, you know, I feel that is not necessarily unfounded because they, the Californians were driving up the price of real estate. And so um, when I told people I was from California because they would ask me where I'm from, then I would get um, kind of like a prejudiced vibe. <laughs> But I can understand why, because as I talked to different people, they were saying, you know, they are driving up the price of land and it's like they had, the Californians had a disrespect for uh, Hawaii. And I was remember reading something, I believe it was the founder of, Oh, what's the name? I don't remember the name of the company, but it was Larry Ellis. He had brought, bought a whole bunch of land and uh, Mark Zuckerberg was keeping, I remember also reading or hearing that Mark Zuckerberg was keeping native Hawaiians off his property, but they couldn't get to their house without crossing his property. So he put up fences. Um, so I can understand why they're, might be still some of this going on, but for the most part, um, I felt very welcomed in Hawaii as a quote unquote foreigner. Although I believe that I might have some Polynesian ancestry, but that's another, <laughs> another video and another discovery. Okay, there are many reasons why missionaries were unable to record the truth about the spiritual philosophy of the Tahunas and the religion of the Hawaiian people, the religion of the Mu or Tahunaism. In the first place, they were given bits of knowledge by island scholars, island scholars, but they disdainfully regarded native theories as pagan nonsense. The contributions conflicted too sharply with their own theories. They preferred to preserve the negative aspects of primitive Hawaiian culture instead of the more refined positive tenets. In the second place, the foreigners could not express themselves fluently in the Hawaiian language. They had received only six months instruction in a tongue from four native lads who sailed from Boston aboard the ship the same ship that conveyed the Mary Heaney's newcomer strangers to the islands. The Hawaiian spoke not only with sound, but with gestures as well. A listener knew what the speaker meant by perhaps the rise of an eyebrow, an expression of the face, a tilt of the head, or a description molded with fingers. It has often been said, tie a kanaka's hands and you will have him tongue-tied. Many words had double, triple, and quadruple meanings, some not even remotely connected with the other. The same word pronounced one way meant one thing, yet pronounced differently, it meant something else. The purport of a word depended not only upon inflection, but also upon the words with which it was accompanied in a sentence. In a sentence, and so um, when I think of languages that I've studied and learned, um, this is kind of similar to context clues, and a lot of words, especially in the English language, a lot of words have multiple and varied meanings. Um, I think the word want had about 27, 27 different meanings. And so I can understand six months is not enough time. The combination, going back to the text, the combination was a bit too much for the newcomers, newcomers to cope with. And the result was that they often got the wrong impression. On the other hand, the Hawaiians could not express themselves adequately in English. Many of them were able to speak a smattering of that tongue, which they had picked up from foreign seamen and traders, who occasionally swept into the island bays aboard sailing vessels. A few Haores, Caucasians, 
had settled in the islands during the 40 years that had elapsed between the time Captain Cook's records announced Hawaii's presence in the Pacific and the time when the first ministers of Christianity arrived. From those white residents, some natives gained a slight understanding of English, but they were yet unable to engage in profound discussions involving religion and gods and the gods. The missionaries, after establishing a foothold, concocted a new language for the heathen, quote, heathen they had come to save from the pit of darkness, unquote, to use one of their own expressions. I'm going to say that again. The missionaries, after establishing a foothold, concocted a new language for the heathen they had come to save from the pit of darkness to use one of their own expressions. They removed, they removed the native R and replaced it with an L, changed the T to a K, and substituted W for V. Oh, okay, so no wonder. Okay, now this is making sense. So, um, Hawaii is now Hawaii, and Tahuna is now Kahuna. And I'm not sure. Oh, okay, and so remember when I read Haores? Now it would be because we're replacing the R with an L. It's now Howleys, and that's the word I know. Okay, so thus, Honoruru became Honolulu, Tiv became Kiave, Ki, Kiave, y'all, I'm sorry, please forgive me for my mispronunciations, and Hawaii became Hawaii. The pronunciation Hawaii is still favored by Hawaiians. I have, in this book, used a more genuine Hawaiian terms than modern ones, but I feel I am entitled to the privilege because of birthright. The newcomers who had agreed with the mission board in Massachusetts not to interfere with the government or customs of the islanders also relegated to oblivion words they deemed obsolete and fashioned new terminology. These changes were made in order to, quote, administer medicine for the health of the barbarians, unquote. Bitter gall for many a native to swallow. The innovations caused a lot of confusion for people who were digesting a new mother tongue, adjusting to a new way of thinking, and trying to learn English at the same time. The ultimate results were disastrous because meanings of many archaic phrases were soon lost and modern Hawaiians cannot possibly interpret what their forefathers meant by what they said in chants and prayers of a few centuries ago. Another factor was that the Marahinis were reared in an austere, chilly atmosphere. Their prim and pro proper culture was very different from the sunny culture of the happy-go-lucky Polynesians. They were not accustomed to seeing nude, brown-skinned people playfully basking in sunshine. They were shocked. Besides, their conditioned minds prevented them from coping with a philosophy that was so vastly different from their own and accepting theological teachings that differed so greatly from the ones expounded by their church. They were, by their very upbringing, unable to settle comfortably into the fabric of island living and thinking as were those who belonged there. Furthermore, the missionaries had a difficult time establishing close friendships with native intelligentsia. This true the Bostonians taught Hawaiian nobility how to read and write in the English language, and they must be given due credit for the splendid job they performed. Nobility was fascinated by the new game of reading and writing. The whole nation went to school and sat around beneath waving fronds of coconut palms studying the amusing palapala, palapala, 
reading, writing, spelling, scriptures that Calvinists introduce. Um, the way the book is set up, so Paula Paula is in italics and uh, in parentheses is the meaning. So if there's a word, a Hawaiian word that we don't know, um, the author puts the English meaning in parentheses right next to the word. Going back to the book, the Puritans, however, were richly reimbursed by the high chiefs with huge grants of land in exchange for their services. But royalty did not discuss their inner thoughts and religious beliefs with subordinates. They did not fraternize with peasants. They did not consider missionaries their equals. The foreigners were regarded as hired tutors who were dismissed at the end of a session of instruction. The Bostonians, therefore, had no opportunity of gaining an insight into the philosophy of cultured Hawaiians. They had no access to the profound teachings of Hawaii's wise old priests. None of the latter dared reveal what they knew to those who were not entitled to know because the high priest Hava Hava had cast the dreaded quote, death curse, unquote, over the head of any member of the priesthood who imparted to the Christians the inner secrets of their temples. The missionaries had to depend largely for knowledge upon the Mata Aya Nana citizens of the soil who knew absolutely nothing about the esoteric teachings of temple priests. Knowledge was preserved within the priesthood and given only to members of royalty who were inclined towards spiritual subjects. Commoners were never given inner meanings of sacred lore because of their lack of appetite for such choice morsels and because they were regarded as unable to receive and comprehend that which was holy. The missionaries are entitled, of course, to their beliefs, for God endowed each soul with the power of intelligent reasoning, granted each man the privilege of freedom of thought, gave each the choice of forming his own opinions in keeping with his way of thinking, and the Lord extended to every man the right of rejecting or accepting the theories of others. It would not be fair to say that all missionaries were simple-minded evangelists. Some were men of scholarly bent who painstakingly collected what information was available about the sunny theology of the Hawaiians and made of it what they could. Unfortunately, too many are like sheep who follow their leaders blindly rather than exercise their minds and think for themselves. Too many like to theorize. They fill in missing gaps with products of their own mental creations which too often distort the picture or present a false one. And so it is, and so it was in Hawaii during the pioneering days of American settlement. Western writers of Hawaiian antiquities, Western writers of Hawaiian antiquities who followed in the wake of missionaries abided by the decisions of their unenlightened countrymen and who is finite man who plays such a brief role in the cavalcade, cavalcade of his earthly drama to make definite decisions about things which he knows little and authoritatively announce his conclusions as truth when they may or may not be truth. Okay, and who is finite man who plays such a brief role and the cavalcade of this earthly drama to make definite decisions about things of which he knows little and authoritatively announce his conclusions as truth when they may or may not be truth. And that's a question mark. That was a long sentence. And I don't know what cavalcade, I've not encountered that word before. So I'm gonna look that up really quickly. And, um, it's a formal, formal procession of people walking on horseback or riding in vehicles. 
Okay, so, and who is Finite Man, who plays such a brief role in the cavalcade of this earthly drama? So, you know, the, the walking of this earthly drama, this procession of earthly drama to make definite decisions about things of which he knows little of, basically. The only way we may learn about the ancient Hawaiian concept of divinity is to delve deep into the Huna profundities of their temple chants and prayers where the Tahunas taught of the gods from whom the Hawaiian people descended. Many of those chants and prayers were recited by native priests for the teachers of Christianity to preserve in writing. It was a case of, quote, let white men record our gems of poetical beauty, lest their esoteric significance be lost forever, unquote. Those chants and prayers had been handed down in the priesthood orally from generation to generation for centuries. But times were changing. The younger generation had forsaken the cross of Rano for the cross of Christ. They were not interested in the spiritual teaching of their predecessors. The Tahunas did not attend mission schools and did not know how to read or write. So they allowed their opponents to do the writing for them, but never divulged the esoteric contents of the recitations, lest the recordings be relegated to the heap of destruction along with other sacred relics of the past. Until this day, no Westerner has been able to translate them correctly into the English language. Tahunas abided strictly by their motto, quote, conceal in secrecy, preserve in silence, disguise our inner teachings with a false outer mask, lest unholy unbelievers trample our pearls of wisdom beneath their feet and rend them to shreds. Unquote. They gave their inner teachings only to those who were initiated into the holy order. They had another saying, Those who are born into our house are entitled to know the secrets of our house. Those who do not belong are not entitled to know what we know. Okay, that is the end. That is the end of the chapter. Uh, this was the introduction. And as I read it, I now know why the ancestors were angry with Dr. Hewlin. Um, I remember him or someone saying that the ancestors were mad at him for releasing Ho'oponopono wisdom to the rest of the world. And I had wondered why would they be mad when the whole world is getting benefited, the whole world benefits from clearing these false memories and even the ancestors are benefited from clearing the false memories the false um the erroneous thoughts the erroneous words the erroneous deeds so why are they angry you would think that they would be happy but it all is making sense after reading this chapter if you have any questions or comments i would love to hear what you have to say and um you know given that this book was written a about over 50 years ago, what other prejudices might we encounter? And so I want you to be um, cognizant that not everyone loved everyone else. And there was a lot of misappropriation and colonization. And so um, maybe after reading the book, we can do Ho'oponopono over some of the issues that arise in a book. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do a quick Ho'oponopono for some of the issues that we did read. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you, uh, missionaries that have come to Hawaii to spread their knowledge, but not wanting to know or even being given access to. And why did they feel that their way was the right way? So I'm sorry, please forgive me over all of that. I'm sorry, please forgive me for whatever is in me that caused um, missionaries to be colonizers over Hawaiians, not letting the Hawaiians live and, you know, being at peace. The Hawaiians, they were at peace. They were loving life, enjoying life. And, you know, these colonizers came over to take over 
I believe it started with Captain Cook. My history is not the best uh, when it comes to Hawaiian lore and um, what happened in Hawaii. So I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Speaking of Hawaii versus Hawaii, you know, um, people just decided that they were going to change letters and, you know, who are they to change letters around and, you know, make a whole, basically a whole nother language, which the Hawaiians had to learn English, which was already confusing enough, let alone having letters switched uh, in their language switched around. So I'm sorry, please forgive me for whatever is in me that uh, created that craziness and inversion. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Having to learn English, read le English, uh, write in English, English being the number one one of the number one languages in the world. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And it wasn't necessarily welcome, but it was forced upon people. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Um, if you continue to think of these ideas, please do Ho'oponopono as you can. And that's it for today. I'll talk to you later. I hope you're having a wonderful day or evening wherever you're at in the world. Bye.